Today's lesson is the second lesson in animating. I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, boys and girls, I'd like you to just pay very good attention to the animation we're going to be doing in today's class. Let's just build on what we did in the previous lesson. I'm going to be showing you how to duplicate frames. We'll be using the onion skin once again to provide some sort of transparency so we can th see through our frames. That's very necessary when one does animation. We're going to be using the eraser to focus on certain areas that need to be eliminated. I'm going to eliminate part of a character's eyes to give some sense of movement. So I'm going to animate those eyes. The onion skin is going to provide me with the ability to see through the frames and help me do this. I just wanted to apologize for the poor coloring on my display. That still needs to be set, though I'm showing this lesson despite that. I'm just, I'll just draw a very simple character. So we're going to go with this line, and I'm going to make sure that I close my line as I indicated in my previous lesson so that we can color in properly. So we're going to do a basic body. So I'll just put that as his arm. And now we've got our body over here. And I'm just going to go all the way down to there. And we filled it in with a paint bucket tool, if you remember in the last lesson. So I've just closed all the lines in the paint bucket tool. And now I'm just going to use this, the circle shape, to create those eyes. And we'll do the circle full shape over there to create the black part. And I'm going to need to draw a nose. So there's the nose. We'll draw a very simple mouth. And we've got a basic character developing over here. There's his hair. Just trying to draw it very simply, just so you all understand the principles of what's involved. And we're going to make these eyes move back and forth. And I'm just closing all the spaces. I don't really want to have any problems when I color in. When we go to duplicate, we're going to just drag. As I've just shown you there, if I press on that, I dragged it. And now I'm going to erase certain parts. So I'm going to erase the black part over there. Just erase the two black parts. And I'm going to also work on the mouth so you can see I've taken out the parts that I want to move to create some sort of movement. We'll take this arm as well so there's going to be movement in the arm as our character is animated. But we want a lot of it to remain static. It's quite important that when animating that you have some of the things remain in the same place and there's just some parts moving. So you're going to see, I need to see through this frame. So if I click on the onion skin, there we go, the onion skin. Now you can see through the frame. It's given a transparency, you can see through it. And you can see that light gray is indicating that that's where the previous frames, eyes, the black parts were. So those where the pupils would be. So I'm going to now move them into a different position. And we need to do that. And I'm going to use this full circle full tool and to do that. So let's get around to doing that. And we're going to change the position of these black spots. So I'm going to move that one to the right hand side. And then we'll have this one also on the right hand side, so it'll give the impression of his eyes turning to the left hand side. We as the observer would be seeing him, it's on our right hand side, and we change the mouth. So if I turn the onion skin, look, you can see the animation taking shape quite nicely. So now we're going to drag, and we've duplicated this one, and we're going to then do the very same thing, and I'm going to just bring in a little mosquito or bee that's flying in on my character just to give it some sort of humor and try and make it interesting and we've got this insect coming in and his eyes are observing it so if I click on this frame and I erase the black parts so let's just erase that again because we want to just show these eyes are moving as he is facing the the incoming insect I'm just going to take all of that out and we'll make his eyes change quite substantially and if we bring in the onion skin, it gives the transparency back to us. And his mouth's now opening up as he sees this insect zooming in on him. And we'll make the eyes a bit bigger because he's getting a bit scared. And usually that's the case. 
and the full, the little black dots, move up over there, and we'll bring in this insect as well. Over there, you can see it's taking, you can see if I go over here, and it seems to be working out quite well. So now let's drag that, and we're going to do the very same thing once again. So we're going to erase it. We're going to erase out the mouth because our focus is going to be the movement of the eyes mouth. The insect now needs to also be coming in. So there you can see through the frame and we're going to bring the insect to about there. I think that will be perfect. Oh, that's a bit pretty much on the same place. But anyway, I'm just going to do that. And we could move it if I drag it with a selection tool. We'll just change its direction and move it to about, it's, it's almost, yeah, let's put it on his, well, we'll make it moving down there. So we've got that it moves down. And we'll now go to the mouth and we'll, and we'll, okay, I'm just going to erase this insect. Just getting a bit confused here. And we'll draw the insect again, like that. I'm just, doesn't really matter. I'm working really back to front. I'm going to move it. Let's move it there. So it's landing on his ear. And we'll give it a slight turn. And it's on his ear. And now we'll bring in a few lines to show its movement. This fly, bee, or whatever it is, is moving in. And we're going to transform his mouth again. And bring in a few facial lines. And let's erase those eyes. And as you can see, we can still see through the frame, it's transparent. The light gray showing the transparent areas, the previous frames. And we're going to then work on those eyes, make them even larger than they were in the previous frame with the circle. And we'll make those pupils like that. And we have a, a basic animation coming in over there. So. If we turn off the onion skin, take off the transparency, and now we'll bring in a bit of color. So we've got this color, which is pretty much like the color of skin, and we're just coloring in. You can see that there's open spaces, so that's needing to be fixed. Can't have everything, the color of that. So we're going to go black. We're, going, we're back on the pencil tool. We close all the lines, and now we can bring in a different color. Let's go with red, and we'll make the jersey or his shirt red so we've got a red shirt hmm, there's no hand there but doesn't matter and we go to the next frame we can color that in with a paint bucket tool we're using that paint bucket tool and you can see it's working quite nicely and now we go to the background we go with a purple purple mesh and we bring in a purple background paint bucket tool works beautifully and we'll just bring in this part over here as well but as you can see you've got a good idea of how it works and if you look over there you can see that's our animation it works quite well when you've got some parts that are staying in the same place they're static and other parts that are moving you don't want to have everything moving all the time for the sake of this lesson i'm not going to color everything in but i just wanted you to get the idea of how it works if i stop and i can add in another slide another frame and i could again just drag and that's going to copy the previous frame so you drag and move it to the previous frame you can drag any one of the other frames as well so you've got quite a lot of interesting aspects the following example is with the second class that i taught it's just basic revision so let's just look at this picture and remember we're just filling in all the black spaces and we're just adding in all the detail around it. And remember, it's very important when you use that paint bucket tool that these spaces are closed. So if you wanted to duplicate or copy this frame, you would have used the dragging. But we're bringing in, let's just do it, drag. And we're going to drag it from one to two. So if we wanted to just fill in more detail around this, we could do that and erase, use the eraser to do 
all that we need to do to cover over the areas that are going to be animated. The eraser is that so important when one does animation. I'm just using a very simple example, but most of the animation would be just on certain areas. It won't be everything. You're not going to animate everything. Now let's just go over the duplication from 1 to 2. Drag 1 to 2. And that blue indicates that we are duplicating. So by drag, we manage to get 2 of 1. So frame 1 has now been made. There's 2 of them. And they are 1 and 2. We've copied them. And now we can extract the parts that we wanted to extract. And we can use the onion skin to see through frame 2 in, and see what frame 1 looks like compared to frame 2. So we're erasing this part over here. Those eyes are now erased over there. I'm going to erase that eye over there. And you can see if I erase that line over there, just the side of his left-hand side, which would be our right. And we can make changes to the mouth as well. So if I had to take off the eraser, the onion skin, you'd be able to see that which parts are clearly defined that are going to undergo some sort of change. Those are the areas we're going to focus on. So if I take the black pen, pen, pen tool and I work on it, I can work on those areas. So you can see, just going to bring a little bit of a line there. Let's change the shape of his face over here. We'll just bring that up more straight. And we can bring in his ear over here. And then we'll work on the eyes. So let's just change his eyes in an awkward way. Bring a line at the bottom. And we'll just bring in a dot over there. So his eyes are moving. And I'm just randomly going to just put in a line over here. And we'll bring in a line down at the bottom as well. And the mouth. Let's go on that one. So we'll just expand it somewhat. Give a slight change to his upper and lower lip. Not much of a change. And let's bring in his hairs of a little bit of wind is blowing in over there. So there's a slight change. Not much. But you can see the animation gives an interesting effect. Now, you've got to do this, boys and girls. You've got to kind of play around and try to get interesting effects using this. But the important thing is that drag, which I've just shown you now. You drag and then... Again, erase, erase the parts that you know you're going to be focusing on. You don't er you want to keep lots of statics, lots of stuff that's going to be the same. And you're going to extract or take away all the parts that you want to have changes taking place to. So that part of his eyebrow will bring in a little bit of a difference there. So if we go to the pen or the pencil tool, we can just change his eyebrow going up and make his eyes somewhat different again. And we'll just bring in a line going down at the bottom like that. We're just not really trying to think about this. You've got to really think when you do yours. Looks like a tear that side. And well, I'm, that's pretty much the same as it was before. And take that down. And we haven't worked on his mouth. We'll have a look. Let's just see. Yes. Okay. We'll bring in that line down there. And you can already see. And I drag to copy again. And we can then go through the whole process again of erasing the parts that we're going to be working with. We'll just take away the whole eye this time. And this right eye, our, his right eye, our left, because we're the ones looking at him. And we're going to now just play around with this eye. When you do it, you've got to work really carefully and try and get yours I'm just using mine as an example. I'm not really trying to show you anything spectacular. But there we got his eye. Like that. Just bring in. And I'm going to bring that line. Two lines there. And I'll just play around with the mouth like that. Anything to just get the idea across to you guys. And we'll bring in a line over there. And we'll just bring a line in of his ear. I think you guys should by this time have mastered the the whole concept of animation. Drag and drop. And it's just the same thing over and over again. Now for coloring in. Let's just go through that. And the paint bucket tool is what we use there. So there's the skin color. 
and paint bucket tool just again does it all very fast it's a wonderful tool to use it just makes you so productive you can see the interesting and also these ears my last picture i didn't do the ears so let's just color those in as well you can really work tremendously fast with a paint bucket tool i can't see why this can't be used not only in art but this animation tool could be very much used in so many different subjects you could animate text as well so i'm going to now bring in red for his hair he's going to have red hair just bring that in as well paint bucket tools coloring it in so fast and now for the jacket and let's go with what color should we use mm, i don't think black will work too well it'll just color everything in let's go with the gray oh Okay, there we go. Uh, paint bucket tool. I, I clicked on the wrong thing. Gray suit. So that's what we call a gray man. You know, very often we say a little gray man in his gray suit. And that's what we're drawing over here. A little gray man in his gray suit. Stereotypically not very creative. The gray man. Okay, and we're filling it in. I think I've left one of the frames out just fill that one in as well but there's a space there so you can see that's just going to fill in everything so I'll fix that in a moment go to black I'm going to close this line over here and then we'll fill in the background so paint bucket tool let's go with a again a semi purple the colors have you noticed the colors on my computer are really bad and we'll go with the red tie red tie you got this contrast of gray and red really don't go well together this guy really doesn't know how to put colors together it's almost like the artist that drew the picture so let's go with red mm, yellow yellow background hot day At the moment we're going through a heat wave in Joburg so it's a yellow it's a good background it kind of symbolizes what's happening at the moment let's change that one to orange we'll make the last two orange and that basically gives us our animation. I'm not really going to go much more than this because the idea has been put through quite well. And I think it's just for you to develop on those ideas. Come back to me and share some of your, what, what you've done. If not, you might pick up on something that I do not know. And you can share that with me and I'll pass it on to the other learners. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. I'd just like to thank everyone for their support and subscriptions. Hi guys, this is Somila. This lesson was done by Mr. Bradley in grade 60. I would just like everyone I would just like to thank everyone for supporting us and please subscribe to Mr. Bradley's videos on YouTube. Thank you.